What's up guys, it's your favorite kitty coach. Welcome to another video. Actually, we're starting a new video series today where we interview other people. So, let's go do this thing. So welcome back to the channel guys. If you guys are new to Kiwi Golf Japan, we do a bunch of videos like this every single week. So what you gotta go do is hit that little red subscribe button, right? Hit that red subscribe button, smash, smash the like button, and let's hop into the first part of this video. Alright guys, so I got a good friend of mine, this is Rio right here. Rio, why don't you real quickly tell the audience kind of how we first met and then we'll kind of go off from there for this interview. Okay. え、初めましてえ、皆さんこんにちは。え、担当コーチ岩間リオと申します。よろしくお願いします。えっと、マイクとはえ、アメリカ、サンディエゴにあの、留学ゴルフ留学をしていたんですけど、その時にえっと、共
and we started playing. Um, well, we did a playing lesson together with Devin. Yes, we did. So, and then I know that you were with him for a while. So, what um, what kind of spurred you to meet Devin, and then what spurred you to keep uh, going? And take okay, the so from? I had my swing coach for three years from uh, Aviara Golf uh, Golf Academy. I believe. Oh, was that yeah. Kip? No, it's not Kip. Uh, it's Bodney. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. So I had a uh, lesson from him. Uh, I think three years, and then, uh, but at that time I was living in uh, Oceanside, so which is close to where uh, Southern Gulf, uh, California. So you were probably going to CGC a lot, right? Yes. Uh, uh -huh, I see. Uh -huh. So that's how you saw uh -huh. it. And then uh, actually I started playing um, the PGA Monday qualifying events like after three years, and I, I felt like I needed something like bigger. I think I, I, I felt like I needed like, bigger help. So that's why, uh, but the, actually, the first person introduced me, Devin, was Kay. Pitapong. Yeah. yeah. Pitapong introduced uh -huh. everyone to Devin. Uh -huh. <laughs> but uh, I never worked with uh, Trackman with, when I went uh, with uh, Botany. Uh, I so see. I was like super interested in working with Devin because uh, he told me about, you know, he uses Trackman Pop Love. So all the, uh, you know, the all advanced the upcoming yeah, devices they yeah. yeah. got. Mm -hmm. I see, I see. Mm -hmm. So that actually leads us into a good segue. So with the technology, kind of um, explain, let's go over body track right now. Because I know basically ground reaction force is super popular in Japan currently. Mm -hmm. Like, can you walk through the audience and tell them um, in terms of what you learned in America, uh, first off, just explain what body track is, what it measures, and then kind of what how you use it for your personal game. Okay, so uh, actually I only used once before the body track. So I, um, I'm more confident with uh, explaining like other uh, devices like uh, Trackman and the Pop Lobs. So uh, I see, I see. Need to so explain that so I'll explain it a little bit to the audience. So yeah. I saw, well, I saw you one lesson on body track, I believe, mm -hmm. right? And I with think the mat, right? Yeah, with the uh -huh. mat. I think you're pushing too much linear, correct? Exactly. Uh -huh. Yeah. So basically, to just a real quick summary for you guys that watching at home, mm -hmm. body track basically has all these little sensors on the ground, mm -hmm. and it basically measures kind of how your feet work essentially, right? Now the inspiration behind body track was they were thinking that there's so many what you call proprioceptors or like basically you have more feel in your feet than you do in most of the other parts of your body. So that's why they kind of wanted to start there because mm -hmm. their theory, which is true and not true, is that they think that most golfers would benefit from being able to kind of learn how to use their feet. Right. Right? That's basically the mm -hmm. basics of body track. Oh, I yeah. see. Okay. Actually, I remember one thing I learned from the body track. Um, so I. You know, I never used it before until I met Devin. So sure. it was a totally my, you know, brand new war for me. But uh, uh, like you said, um, I didn't use my body shift correctly. So I didn't like uh, optimize the power. So that's why like I felt like, oh, maybe I, I, this is something I needed to work on as well. Instead of, you know, making your swing look better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was a huge part. Uh -huh. And I think too, in terms of kind of just translating back this, how Japanese golf is different from American golf, mm -hmm. I would say what I learned with body track, which I think you learned too, was with body track, we learned that there's a difference between a pressure shift mm -hmm. and a center of mass shift, which, right. which we see in Japan, we see a center of mass shift typically taught, which mm -hmm. the whole body is moving. Mm -hmm. And then there's a pressure shift, guys, which a pressure shift just means that you're actually your feet, mm -hmm. kind of the pressure that you're applying on the ground is moving, right? So it might not visually look like you're moving a lot, right. but your pressure is moving a lot, which mm -hmm. I'm sure Devin kind of probably simplified that down into more of a player's right. terminology for you. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's that's a really interesting concept. Mm -hmm. Cool. So moving on, mm -hmm. what about, um, let's go real quickly into track band real quick, because mm -hmm. I know there's a lot of my audience that likes ball flight loss. Yeah. <laughs> kind of, um, what, what was like the first main thing you learned with track band with Devin? So my biggest uh, problem was my attacking angle. It was too steep, so which created too much spin on it. And then I could easily hit big slice, maybe, you know, snap, snap, hook, like any type of like curving ball. So I was, that's something I was struggling with. But then once I uh, improved the attacking angle, I started hitting pretty sharp. So actually, maybe that was like after two lessons, I started shooting like 68 and then maybe a week later I messaged uh, Devin saying hey I shot 66 and it wasn't that far uh, from my first lesson with Devin I won my no actually that was my second uh, victory on uh, board tour. Mini tours yeah mini yeah, tour, yeah. yeah right uh -huh. very cool so basically would you say because let's translate this back to the Japanese audience out there would you say um, with, with ball flight laws and the concept of ball flight laws, I think what I hear in Japan currently is that it's basically 
club half and face angle. Mm -hmm. And what you know, and I think Devin knew, was that ball flight laws actually encompassed a lot more than just right. club half, half and face. Angle, so and that, yes. angle attack, deep uh -huh. plane, and all that. So mm -hmm. would you say that knowledge, you said, helped you win tournaments, correct? Yes. Uh -huh. So now translate that back if you could. Do you remember lessons maybe here in Japan before you left? Kind of hard, right? No. But you do have experience with people teaching recently, right? And mm -hmm. would it, have you seen people who use TrackMan or use basically that type of technology here in Japan? Do you think they use it to its optimal amount? Um, I only know a few, but uh, uh, what I actually what my buddy and I changed was a uh, practice swing. So we know uh, how to how we should swing. It's yeah. instead of like making down swing, make nicer. Um, so, like I said, I, I was too steep, so my practice swing was much more shallower. And then, uh, like you said, uh, uh, path and face angle is also um, important. So, uh, I was more, you know, I started paying more attention with uh, path and uh, face angle too, at the same time. Yeah, and that basically allows you to get to those wins, right? Mm -hmm. So, anyways, for the Japanese audience out there, I think that's a great fact for you guys. I think um, understanding, because you wouldn't say that Devin gave you all the information, right? You didn't need to know every little tiny aspect of it, but knowing the simple little basics of ball flight laws helped you increase your playing exactly. ability, right. which you had been stagnant for for about three years, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah, correct. Yeah. Uh -huh. So in the future, guys, besides this interview, Rio is actually going to be doing some videos with us. He's going to have his own video series. So part of that video series mm -hmm. is he's going to help me with kind of the ball flight laws discussion that we're trying to bring to Japan here. Mm -hmm. I know that there is ball flight laws, and I know people do talk about it, but we're going to hopefully expand on that knowledge mm -hmm. in the future, yeah. and that'll be pretty cool. But, so anyways, let's kind of wrap this up. So this was kind of part one of this interview. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, please like, comment, share, all that good stuff down there. Let us know if you guys like this style of video. Rio, thank you so much for stopping by. We're going to have part two coming out pretty soon, guys, and yeah, this is good.